Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris for this acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to paint hugs and kisses step by step from start to finish. So let's get started. I created a series of gnomes and thought I had finished all of the season. However, I had many requests for Valentine's Day. This is such a fun design using acrylic paint and just a few brushes. So whether you are a beginner or just painting for fun, this is quick, easy, and impressive. I did seal my project with multi-purpose sealer and base coated Snow White. I am positioning a piece of painter's tape just to mask off the sky area to protect it while I create the fence. Using a texture graining brush, it's slightly dampened and I'm just loading the tips of it with thin charcoal gray, starting past the outside edge and pulling it straight across. This is to create the wood grain. I always start at the top and the bottom and pull it together. That way there's no middle stop and start areas where you have to try to blend them. I just keep going over it until I'm satisfied with the intensity of it. To create the slats in the board, I love using my T ruler because I always can get a straight line that way. Just use it for the initial kind of float. And then I'll just keep moving it over and putting another float down, remove it, and then I can float the other side. Such an easy way to create perfectly up and down straight boards. And the width of the ruler is pretty much a good spacer. And I do make sure to wipe the ruler off each time I use it, just to make sure that I don't carry over any unwanted paint somewhere where I don't want it. And it's just, I'm using my half inch awesome angle. Just a little bit longer at the brush I created. Gives you that extra length on the bristle to make a longer float. Do use quite a bit of water so that I can move the paint around more um, if I need to. And that way it doesn't dry or set up quickly right away. And I, also I can get a longer stroke and blend it together much easier. And you can see how quickly, and the film is, I did speed it up a little bit, but you can see how quickly I can create these boards. And this is a rustic fence. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want more perfection, you definitely could space it out and, and do it exact. But this is a great way to create those fun designs quickly without a lot of fuss. And we all like to create things quickly without a lot of fuss. And it doesn't come out even, but with the design in the foreground, this is just a backdrop for uh, the design, so no, it's not a focal point. Now that I have the boards in there, I'm just going to enhance it. And I loaded my Epic Script Liner with soft black, just darkening that crack in between each one of those boards. And that just gives a little more depth to it. And I have the paint really thinned down so that I can make an entire stroke before I have to reload. If you cannot do that, you do not have enough water in your brush. You want that paint just to flow on. Want to create that look of a chipped edging. I've just loaded my radical round with soft black. Kind of roll it across the top to create that jaggedy look of chipped paint. Now I did take Snow White and my Epic Script Liner and just line the edge of that chipped paint a little bit just to enhance it. Using the half inch awesome angle to base coat the sky with spa blue. It's not solid. I like the look of uh, light and dark. It makes it kind of resemble clouds. Now the hats are base coated white cactus flower and cotton candy, and I'm stenciling the noses warm beige. Want to get the nose placement in so I can add design on the hat. Just makes it a little easier to work with the hats. And I did stencil that with warm beige. Using my Epic Script Liner and cactus flower to paint the stripes and wild berry. 
and you can see I'm not being fussy with I just want to put the design in there that's all we're going to go for at this point the hats are all folded over and layered so perfect design isn't that important I'm using my handy helper to stencil primitive hearts on the middle hat with wild berry just want to get a fun design in there it doesn't have to be particularly even and spaced out the hat on the right I'm using a stencil just to add dip dots or you can use a stylus to add dip dots whatever is easier using cotton candy to add a little bit of shading now my highlights on the top left so my shading is primarily going to be on the bottom and the right side just adding layers in there and same thing on the middle hat I'm using wild berry since the hat is a little bit deeper that's that cactus flower and this creates the folds I think shading and highlighting are just magical and I'm using cotton candy on this one or I'm sorry I'm using cactus flower to shade the lighter one just to get that look on there of the folds now I'm going back once I've get the initial layering in there how I want the folds to look I'm just going to go back with a little bit deeper pink to enhance that and really start to make that hat look dimensional using white to highlight top left to make that look like it's really floppy and layered same on this hat and it's just a, a game of going back and forth with highlights and shadowing and I do hop around to kind of make sure that the highlights and shading are all equal value going back with the handle into my brush to add brighter dip dots more highlights to really make that hat dimensional and you're not finished until you're finished so you can go back and enhance shade highlight until it you're happy with it I did decide to put a little bit of perfect Perry in the background I wanted to create a little more contrast between the hats this will be a little bit easier to do before you paint the hats in and if you're interested in the instructions that is all on the instructions a little bit of dry clay I did go back and top coat those noses a few more times to get them nice and opaque dry clay to add a little shading on the bottom and the right side let that get nice and dry everything is dried between layers a little bit of wild berry to make those noses a little bit rosy Just blend it out a little bit of paint makes a big difference I think that ought to be my motto such a great way to look at paint a little bit of highlights on the noses one of those little hearts to sparkle a little bit of snow white to add the conversation hearts I had to decide do I want to every other one or did I want them all pink I decided to go every other one again I'm using a stencil it just makes it easy to get them perfect and make sure I'm, and I'm using my spectacular stencil brush make sure that the paint is not wet and the brush is not wet or you'll have problems with the edges if you want nice crisp straight edges use regular paint no water make sure that you do several light coats instead of one heavy coat and you'll have perfect results every time adding just a little side edge with my radical round make those hearts look a little bit dimensional and that's with uh, the purple hearts are purple petal and perfect peri the pink hearts are cotton candy and wild berry And I'm using my mono zero eraser I did go in and kind of pencil them in where I wanted the placement to be if you pick up the pattern you'll have the traceable line drawing now I'm using my number three spectacular stencil and wild berry to stencil on the lettering on the little hearts and honestly 
who wants to hand paint all those little tiny letters? Stencils are just absolutely perfect. And this is such a fun stencil. I love using these little sayings. And I did create a stencil just for this project that has all of the different parts of stencils all combined onto one stencil just to make it easier and a little less expensive as well. Now I'm adding dip dots of soft black just for the hang holes and putting on using my Epic Script Liner and adding the little hanging cords. And I did like a little loop on each one of those um, where they're connected to the hearts. Some places they don't show up really well. So I'm just adding a little bit of white to create that contrast. And you have to best pay attention to the background. If you don't need the white highlight, don't put it on there. If it blends into that background wood grain, that's when you add the highlights. So you just have to look at it and see whether or not you want it to stand out. And you can see what a big difference that little bit of paint makes. Again, my motto, a little bit of paint makes a big difference. And there is a hole, a hang hole for the plaque behind that last heart. I did sketch on the cupcake using the chisel edge of my half inch angle just to kind of pop in. I want that wrapper to look like it has those sections in it. Such an easy way to add that without a lot of work. Painting in the icing, and I'm just using Snow White at this point, just to get that in there. And I did use a little bit thicker paint on the wrapper, just still straight up and down. You can use a radical round. Want to make sure my side edges are a little bit crisp. And now I'm putting in the cotton candy. And I add a little bit of drying. And the cupcake wrapper is not hard to do. It's just a combination of strokes and a little bit of shading and highlighting. It doesn't have to be fussy and perfect. Now I'm adding some wild berry shading and see what a difference that little bit makes underneath the icing at the top. Still want to maintain brighter on the left side and on the middle where that's going to have more highlights there. And this creates that dimension. White's hard to work with because it does take several layers to get it nice and opaque. Thought it would be fun to add a little purple in there. And I'm just kind of tucking it underneath and pulling it down into those ridges. Need to put a little bit on the bottom to balance it out. It's kind of fun to bring these colors together. Put a little bit of wild berry in there to create a darker stripe. Didn't go quite all the way across. Jumping back up into the icing, kind of bouncing back between top and bottom as one area dries and that way I'm not sitting there looking at the paint while it's drying. Switch to my radical round to get those fine edges on there. The first few layers, I'm a little less careful, but I always maintain directional brush strokes so that each layer kind of looks like the up and down stripes of the wrapper. A little more highlights on the hats. As it dries, they seems like they tone down a little bit more. Plus, now I've painted that white icing, the hats don't look as bright. Put a little bit of blue in there. It wasn't real crazy, so I just softened it down. Really want to brighten up those stripes on that wrapper. More Snow White, just pure Snow White. Time to put on the lettering. Again, I'm just using the stencil and my spectacular stencil brush. And if you've not used my brushes, my stencil brushes, the bristle is super soft. Just really is an easy, beautiful brush to stencil with. 
I did go back on the script part of the lettering and connect with uh, the soft black so it doesn't look like it's stenciled. I decided I wanted the little flowers to be white and I have stenciled those in. And after I added those in white, later on I decided I didn't like that color, but that's okay. This was just for placement. And it's a, a great way to add those designs in there quickly. I didn't want a whole flower, so I just kind of mask off the top of the stencil to do the roses. I'm using a half inch angle loading in the toe with cotton candy and the heel with wild berry. Always reload. I can do about two strokes before I have to reload. And it's just simple float, float, float. That, that easy. I don't make my roses complicated. Now for a smaller rose, I did bump down to a quarter inch. It's going to size brush you use is what will determine the size of the flower. Two back strokes, the back barrel, the front barrel, and then those side wing strokes. Just very simple when you break it down. This is a single rose, just a single rose bud. It's just the back stroke and then a couple on the front. If you don't like it, paint over it, wipe it off. The paint is very loose until it dries. It's not finished. There we go. That one was giving me trouble. Now I'm just taking a little bit on the toe of my brush to kind of touch up some of the edges of the flowers. And I'm going back to add more highlights later. Double loaded my brush with eucalyptus leaf and sage mint. Try to keep that dark toward the bottom. And I'm just, this is a filbert, just pressing down and kind of pulling out to a point. I keep those leaves very loose. I don't like them to be perfect and exact. Just kind of stroke them in, and it looks like I'm doing it super fast, but remember the film has sped up just a little bit. For these smaller ones, I just went with sage mint. I believe there's a little bit of eucalyptus uh, green on my eucalyptus leaf on my brush. I don't always clean my brush out. Here I'm going back with my Epic Script Liner and Snow White just to add some highlights on the roses and a few more little extra strokes to look like more layers of petal. This is a great way to fill it in and make the roses look nice and full. You can see some of those empty areas. I just tuck some more white in there and it just makes it look a little bit fluffier. Adding a little bit of a thin Snow White on my leaves just to brighten them up a bit. Just using the toe of my quarter inch angle just to float some little bits of highlights in there. I decided, I thought maybe I wanted to outline the, the flowers in black. It just wasn't working. So I did go back with the purple petal and top coat the flowers. After I worked with that for a little bit, I decided it might be easier just to use my brush. So after the first couple, it was, it was easier to switch over to a brush, especially where they bump up against the other flowers. But it was really nice because I had that base for the flowers in there with the white. So I've painted the petals, purple petal, <laughs> and then I put that perfect petal around the, the flower center, and that flower center is moon yellow. And make sure that you, if you have one flower tucked in front of or behind another, that that flower is, doesn't have a part missing, that you def, make a definite front in front of or behind the flower. Just going back to deepen that center a little bit on all of those. Don't mean to make you dizzy, but I do swirl my plaque around. It just seems to make it easier. I don't have to struggle with awkward positioning when I'm floating the colors on. I just spin it around and float. 
I did want my floats to be just a little bit defined so they're not blended out perfectly. Adding a little bit of Snow White highlight on the tips. It looks really strong, but once it dries, it's going to be toned down quite a bit. And this is to highlight the tips of the petals. Decided maybe those little hanging conversation hearts needed some highlights on those as well. See, I go back and forth, adding more highlights on the roses to fill them in, using the chisel edge of my brush just to just add more layers on that. And you can see how I'm just, I brighten up all of them across the plaque instead of just working on one completely until it's finished. A little bit of charcoal gray around the bottom and right side of those flower centers to make them recede in there. Adding some snow white dip dots on all of the flowers. I did have a few moon yellow ones inside the roses. Just going to brighten those up with some Snow White. Really make some pop. You have all those little sparkles. It's just a fun way to add interest. And it's, again, not, I forgot that one. It's not difficult. It's just little fun strokes. Add some highlights on there. A little bit of charcoal gray in the center. Brighten up those leaves. Trying to make the, the highlights hit con, con, that continuity across. So if it's going to splash on the left side of the flower in one place, then you need to think where it's going to splash directly across from that. Creates a lot of depth and interest. Look how full those roses look. Adding some veining. I'm just using soft sage if that doesn't show up. Switch over to eucalyptus leaf. You know, you have to look and see what's going to work with your background and with your layout. On those, it didn't show up, so I did pick up some of the eucalyptus leaf to deepen those down. A little more highlights. I don't use a lot of paint, and like I said, when it dries, it mutes down, tones down quite a bit. The cake pops, I wanted those sticks to really be strong and show up well. A little bit of shading on the bottom and the right side. I did base coat those both with cotton candy. The icing is Snow White. Time to decorate the cupcake. I knew I wanted a couple little hearts on it, and I wasn't sure of positioning and color. Um, I am shading the icing on the bottom and the right side primarily with cotton candy just to give a little bit of dimension there and after i painted one heart with cotton candy the other was the darker um, cactus flower and i shaded the cactus flower heart with the wild berry and it just seemed really dark and compared to everything else around it it was a very very strong heart Decided the top heart needed to be purple petal, and I'm using that perfect peri to shade the side edge. For the long skinny candy sprinkles, I double loaded my brush with perfect peri and purple petal to do a stroke. And then for the pink ones, it, I double loaded with cotton candy and wild berry. Did the same thing with the stylus. If you look really close, you can see that each dot and each little uh, long sprinkle has like a two-tone color to it. Just a fun little trick to add more color easily without a lot of fuss. I did decide to lighten up that heart. Wanted it to be a lot softer and not quite so prominent. So I toned it down with cotton candy and cactus flower. I am shading underneath everything with soft black have to be very, very careful. This will make the icing look dirty in a heartbeat. Very, very light, almost a hint of color. And it, it just gives that little bit of shadowing that is needed. Now for everything else, I'm gonna be using charcoal gray, but charcoal gray on this pink and this white just makes it look super dirty. So everything that's shaded on the actual cupcake is soft black and even in between the candy pops there or cake pops. 
brighten that right cake cake pop up a little bit um, brighten up those little hearts I do jump around with my highlighting to make sure it's all balanced you have to have that consistency where the light is coming in I did not add any more shading to the icing but because of all the sprinkles some of it became very dark so I can go back with the snow white and just brighten it up adding a little more shadowing to where the icing kind of wraps around those hearts when they're tucked into the icing and just kind of go back and forth until everything looks like it is in the icing and not just painted on top love adding the sparkle what a huge difference just a tiny little dot of snow white really makes them sparkle and stand out i think it it adds that little touch of whimsy and even on those long sprinkles i'm pull just a tiny bit of i uh, white snow white across the top to give them a little bit of sparkle as well while i'm there brighten up the wrapper I, you can tell some areas just seem dull Snow White Epic Script Liner, just do some cross hatching on the purple one and add a wild berry heart in the center of the small one. I put a dot in the center and put little dip dots around the edge. Didn't like that dot in the center, so I just lifted it out and touched over it and just left it plain. Add little dip dots of Snow White on the purple heart. Brighten those sticks up a little bit more for the candy pops. I double loaded my stylus. I used the bigger end and I used wild berry and cotton candy because I want these to be a little bit bolder. And since they're on the cake pop, there'll be a little bit of a different decoration than on the cupcake. Just enhancing the shading and the highlighting on that back cake pop and add a little bit of wild berry underneath that icing just to really pronounce it and underneath as well. It's all about dimension. Shading and highlighting is everything. Doing a little bit of a bow around the sticks and I decided to put them behind the flower leaves and petals. Later on I'll bring it to the front but I wasn't sure if I where exactly I wanted it. Easy fix. A little highlight on the candies on the cake pop and, and wow again just what a difference that little bit of paint will make on that. Go back and touch up a little bit of highlights on there. This is, I think, one of the biggest impacts of everything that is, that is on this piece. Adding a little bit of a drop shadow. And I told you earlier that I used soft black on the cupcake. I'm using charcoal gray, and that's the same color we used on the wood grain. But I'm putting a very, very transparent shadow. It's a drop shadow behind it's to the right and below, just a little bit below. Very soft, using my radical round, mimicking everything, even those little strings that, that hang down the, from the hearts. And I have a paper towel in my hand. If it is too strong of a shading or shadowing, I can just take that paper towel and kind of touch it and lift off the excess. But I'm putting it behind and to the right of everything. Now I do want the base like below the cupcake and in the corners to be a little darker. Adding it behind the lettering, look how it just lifts it off. I just think that's so amazing. I love doing this. Almost like magic, huge difference. Those letters go from just being flat painted on letters to now they have some, some depth to them. Don't forget to go beside the cupcake. Anywhere you need a little bit of, I tried to put a shadow on that cupcake with that charcoal gray and it just looks absolutely dirty. I do want the corners a little bit darker. And one thing in the corners to make them look even darker is to bring some highlights on whatever's in front. So I darkened the corners, but now I'm popping up the highlights on the leaves. The little bit of stroke work on the letters is with pink, and I just needed to decorate them a little bit. Just a, a simple line, a couple little dots, and look how whimsical they become. Kind of kept it simple, and I didn't do every part of every letter because I didn't want it to become so busy it would be difficult to read. However, as I progressed with adding that, I went back and added some more dots. And just to kind of round the letters out, the bottom, the back side of the G, 
the other side of the K. I really hadn't intended on doing those, but it looks so much better having that on there. Using my Epic Script Liner and Snow White just to stroke on the cross hatching on the icing. This turned out so nice. I was just really pleased with that. Using the handle end of my brush and Wild Berry, I wanted these decorations to be very strong and not look the same as everything else. I did give it a quick dry and now I'm shading against the right side and above one side of the icing just to give it that dimension, a huge difference. Add a little bit of Snow White Sparkle on the candies. And I think it looks great. Highlight some of that icing. It always is a good idea to take a look after you're finished. And even waiting until the next day, you can see a lot of times places that need just a little more attention. Sometimes it's just a simple stroke of one color. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking that those sticks just need to be a little bit more pronounced. Just little simple touches of paint so that you can really tell that stick is in there behind and standing strong. Because I have so much paint with the stick and the rose, have to be really careful that it doesn't blend together and become just a solid mass of pink. So I decided to go in darken the stick down, but also that means I need to brighten the rose up. And I'm just working that paint in to define those edges to make sure that that rose is in front of and separated out from the background. Adding some more little strokes of white just to make that rose a little fluffier. Brighten up that ribbon. The little finishing touches are my favorite part. Just look for good, strong contrast, strong highlights, deep shadows, and it will balance out perfectly. I love how this turned out. Hope you give it a try. Valentine's Day is coming up soon. However, this piece can be painted in a quick afternoon or evening. I did list below the source for the supplies, including surface and traceable pattern. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. These are the other 12 patterns in the series, and this will be the last one. Be sure to check out my other videos. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on upcoming videos. I hope you learned a few new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting life a little easier and a lot more fun. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to our next adventure together.